Hey guys, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a basic walkthrough of the Thinkorswim platform. Now today's video definitely won't make you an expert, but it will set you up for a good start and feel free to watch some of my other videos to learn a few more of the advanced tools on the platform. Now it might also be a long one, so if you guys wanna skip ahead, look down below in the description or the comment section for some timestamps to jump ahead to specific topics. Now the page we're looking at right now, this is called the home screen and it is the very first page you're gonna see when first logging into Thinkorswim. Now, if you notice, it doesn't really show you a whole lot of relevant information, so we're not gonna spend too much time here because I doubt you're ever gonna come here again. But if you wanna customize this page, all you have to do is put your mouse in the top right-hand corner of the little widget or gadget that you wanna edit. You click on the two little arrows there. In our case, let's just go to My Account Portfolio. We'll go to Portfolio Structure. And now we can see a nice little square showing us the composition of our account. And you can do this with every little widget up here. You could change this Working Orders box. You could change the PL Open box. Really, it's whatever you wanna change it to. But I doubt you're ever gonna come back to this page, so we're just gonna go ahead and skip on over it. Now, before we move too far, go ahead and look at the top of the screen here. You're gonna see some tabs marked Monitor, Trade, Analyze, Scan, and a few others to the right. Now, what these tabs are are your navigational tabs, basically how you navigate around the platform. Each one of them is their own set of tools, and each one has their own subset of tools within it. In our case, the very first tab we're gonna go to is the Monitor tab, and make sure we're on the Activity and Positions page. Now, this page gives you a nice picture of what is going on in your account right now. From here, we can see all of your working orders, your filled orders, and your canceled or rejected orders for the day. Down below, we can also see all of your working positions and how they're actually doing. For example, in this account, you can see we've got American Airlines. We have 100 shares of it. We purchased it at $20.35. It's currently $20.81. It's up 74 cents today and we're up $46.70 since putting on the position. Now this section down below, the position statement, can also be organized a bit to show you the information you find most relevant. For example, let's say we wanted to add the dividend yields of the companies we hold as well as a breakdown of our actual profit and loss percentage on these companies. All we'd have to do is come up to the gear icon in the top right hand corner. After we click on it, we're just gonna come over here to the look up a column box, and in there we're just gonna type in the things we're looking for real quickly and add them to the right. Now that we've added them to the right hand side, we'll just go ahead and hit OK. Now that we've added them, we can see the dividend yields for each one of these positions, as well as a breakdown profit and loss percentage wise of how much these positions are up or down in the account right now. You can also organize this page a little bit more by actually grouping up the symbols and categories. For example, let's say I wanted my stock positions to be in their own group and my options positions to be in their own group down below. All we have to do is go ahead and right click on the symbol we want to move. We're going to say move to group. In this case, since we don't actually have any groups created, we're going to say add a group. We're gonna go ahead and name this the stock group. Once we hit okay, we're gonna see that that symbol actually disappears from the unallocated section and moves up to its own group called the stock group. Now let's go ahead and quickly move the others on over. All we have to do again is right click on the symbol, move to group, and we'll move to the stock group. And now we can see our page is a little bit more organized. We've got all the stock up here at the top and all of our options positions down here below, our Amazon and our Micron positions. Now keep in mind that as you add new positions to the account, you will need to manually move them into the corresponding group. Just because you buy stock does not mean it's gonna move over to the stock group, and just because you buy options does not mean it's automatically gonna go into the options group. You are going to have to manually move those over going forward. From this page, you can also close out your open positions. Let's say we wanted to sell our 100 shares of American Airlines. All we'd have to do is right click on the symbol, say create a closing order, and from there, you're gonna see a few order templates. In our case, for right now, we're just gonna click on the very top one, which is gonna create a limit order. And what that does is it automatically takes us to the trade page. And down at the bottom, we can see a red line, which is our order ticket to sell those 100 shares of American Airlines with a limit price of $20.75, good for the day. Now we can edit all of these boxes. Here we can change the quantity of shares. Let's say we only wanted to sell 50 shares. We just went ahead and edited that 100 to 50. And let's say we only wanted to sell our shares if they went up to $23. We can also change the order type that we're using from a limit to a market, stop, stop limit, trailing stop, all of the order types right there. And then finally, you've got the time and force box, which defaults today. All we'd have to do is click on that to see the different, uh, the different options there. You could change it to GTC, which is good until canceled. Basically, if the order does not fill today, you want it to go out again tomorrow or the next day or the next day and so on until the order actually fills or until you come in here and cancel it yourself. EXT is the order type you're gonna use if you want the order good for the pre and post market. Now keep in mind, EXT means if it does not fill by the end of the post market session, 7 p.m. Central Time, it's just gonna cancel itself. Whereas GTC EXT, that means it's gonna be good for the pre market, regular market, post market, 
every single day until it fills or until you cancel it. Now, lastly on this order ticket, if you move your mouse over to the far right hand side, you're gonna see a little gear icon. Once you click on that, it's gonna open up a little pop-up window. What this is is your conditional order tool. From here, you can set conditions based off of time. Let's say I didn't want this order to actually submit until two o'clock on April 30th for some reason. This is where we could set that. We could also even set conditions based off of different underlying stock prices. For some reason, I didn't want to sell these shares of American Airlines unless Apple was above $200 a share. I could set that up in here. I could also set it up where it wouldn't sell unless uh, American Airlines was, let's say, overbought on the RSI or there was a recent MACD crossover in the last day. Now, we're not going to get into this too much because it is a very advanced tool, but I really just want you to know that you can set up order types based off of conditions like technicals, like time, stuff like that. In our case, we're just going to go ahead and hit cancel. And now that we're happy with the order, everything looks right, we're going to hit this big green confirm and send button in the bottom right hand corner to actually submit the trade. What you're going to first see is a little order confirmation box saying, are you sure? Do you really want to sell those 50 shares at 23? Since we are sure, we're going to hit send one more time. Now what we're going to do is go back over to the monitor page and we're going to go to the working order section. And now we can actually see that order out there working, trying to sell our 50 shares of American Airlines at $23. Now from this page, you can also edit your working orders or cancel them. So if we wanted to edit or cancel this order on American Airlines, we would just right click on it. At the very top, you see cancel order. That kind of speaks for itself. You would click on that to just outright cancel the order. But if you wanted to edit the order, we would just click on cancel slash replace. Once we click on that, it's going to bring us to the order ticket once again. From here, we could then edit it accordingly if we needed to edit anything. Maybe we wanted to change the number of shares we were selling or the price we were selling it at. In our case, let's say we wanted to bump it down to $22. And once we're happy with the new change, we would just go ahead and hit confirm and send again in the lower right hand corner. And we'll hit send one more time. If we go back to the monitor page, you're going to see that we have a new working order there to sell at 22. And if we go to the canceled order section, we can see that our previous order has been canceled. Now, keep in mind that you also close options positions the exact same way on this page. Down here at the bottom, you can see I've got an Amazon 3300 by 3290 put spread. If I wanted to close out that put spread, all I would do is right click on Amazon, say create a closing order and say buy one vertical Amazon spread. You'll see it automatically brings up the order ticket down at the bottom to buy back that vertical put spread. And all I'd have to do is adjust the price in this case and then hit confirm and send if I actually wanted to submit the trade. In our case, we don't actually want to submit this, so we'll hit delete and go back over to the monitor page. Now again, before we move on to any other tabs, like I said before, this is really what I would consider your home screen. This is where you're going to be able to see everything that's going on in your account right now. But as some highlights up here at the top where you see account statement, this is more of a historical view of your account. If you wanted to see what happened last month, last year, that kind of thing, this is where you could go. FX reports, this is where you're going to see all of your Forex transactions if you actually have Forex permissions. And the strategy roller, I can almost guarantee you, you'll never use. It's one of the only ways to automatically set up uh, transactions in Thinkorswim where it automatically puts on a trade. And this is for simply rolling out covered calls. But you're going to spend probably 99% of your time on the monitor page right here on activity and positions. So that's the one we spent most of our time on today. Next up, we're going to go over to the trade page and specifically the all products tab. Now, just as a heads up, there's probably over 100 different ways to place a trade on Thinkorswim, and you can do so from pretty much every single screen on here. But for right now, when you're first getting started, this is where I recommend you come to place trades on both stock and options. It's also the only place you're going to trade options in Thinkorswim. Now, up here at the top, you can see the underlying stock information. You can see that Amazon last traded for 33.20. You can see that it's up 11.97 today, and you can see the current bid ask. On the right, you can also see how many shares have been traded so far today and the open high and low for the day. If you wanted to see a little bit more stock info, you can click on this little arrow on the left-hand side. From there, it brings up other information like the last traded size, the dividend yield if it actually has one, the current PE ratio, and some more relevant stock info towards the right-hand side. Now on Thinkorswim, the way you place a trade is by clicking on the asking price if you wanna buy and the bid price if you wanna sell. Now that's a common theme everywhere on the platform, whether it be stock, options, or futures. So again, we see the current bid ask price up here, 33.24 by 33.25. If we wanted to buy some shares of Amazon right now, we would go ahead and click on the asking price. Once we do so, we're going to see the order ticket pop up down here at the bottom to buy 100 shares of Amazon at 33.27. Good for the day. We could then edit the order ticket, change the number of shares, change the price we wanted to buy it for or the order type. And then when we're happy, we would just hit confirm and send in the lower right hand corner. Now, let's say we wanted to short the stock. Well, we would just click on the bid price, 33.23. And again, you see it creates an order ticket to sell 100 shares of Amazon at 33.22. So pretty straightforward stuff. Now to create advanced orders, you do it somewhat similarly. All we'd have to do is right click on the, uh, the asking price 
In our case, we're gonna say buy custom. And from there, you can see some other order templates basically with an OCO bracket, with a stop, with a stop limit, and then OCO one, one I created. In our case, we'll just go ahead and click on with OCO bracket. And from there, you can see that three order tickets pop up, buying 100 shares of Amazon, then selling 100 shares and selling 100 shares again. Now, what this is, is an OCO bracket or a one cancels the other order. First, you're saying I wanna buy 100 shares of Amazon. Let's say if it goes down to 3,300. And then if that order ever fills, if I'm ever able to buy shares of Amazon at 3,300, I then wanna try and sell it for 3,400 or stop myself out if it goes down to 3,200. All three of those orders working automatically, so maybe you don't have to be sitting in front of your computer all day. Keep in mind that all of those order templates that you saw are just the defaults. You can always create your own, like you saw I created one called OCO1. But we're not gonna spend any more time on this today. If you guys wanna learn more about how to create OCO brackets, please check out my other video and I'll put the link in the description down below. And that should give you a little bit more info on how to use OCO brackets, when you might wanna use them, and how to actually create them in here. Now, we'll go ahead and delete this. And next up, we're gonna talk about the options down below. Now, what we're looking at in the option chain, this is gonna list us all of the available expirations for Amazon in this case. First off, it lists the date of expiration, then the number of days until expiration followed in parentheses right next to it. And then if we look on the far right hand side, you're gonna see the implied volatility for that expiration, as well as the implied move in parentheses next to it. So if we wanted to trade the 18 June expiration, we can see those expire in 56 days from now. And if we move our mouse over to the right hand side, we can see the implied volatility is 30.6%. So if we wanted to trade those, we would just click on the expiration. Once we do that, it's gonna open up the actual option chain itself, showing us some of the available strikes. Now on Thinkorswim, the strikes are listed down the middle. We can see the 3315 strike, the 3320, the 3325, and the 3330. Now on this screen, you're gonna see the calls on the left-hand side and the puts on the right-hand side. And all of the in-the-money options are gonna be highlighted in blue, and all of the out-of-the-money options are gonna be highlighted in black. Now let's also say we wanted to expand the list of strikes because obviously there are a lot more than four available strikes on Amazon. We would just come up here to the top where it says strikes four, click on that little drop-down menu, and from there, we could say, let's say we wanted to see 14 available strikes. Now, from this page, we could also just expand the list by typing in an exact number that we want. Let's say we wanted to see 25 strikes on Amazon. We would just type it in and hit enter. And now we see 25 strikes down below. Now, the default view on the option chain or the default layout is going to show you the last traded price, the net change for the day, and then the bid and the ask. Now, for me, that's not the most useful information. So let's say we wanted to change that layout. All we'd have to do is come up here where it says layout. Click on that and you're going to see some default templates. Now you can choose from one of those default templates or you can come down here to customize and create your own. In our case, we're just gonna click on the Greeks, Delta Gamma Theta Vega. And now down below, we can see a breakdown of all the Greeks for each individual strike. Now remember, just like for the stock, for the options, when you wanna buy an option, you click on the asking price. When you wanna sell an option, you click on the bid price. So let's say for example, we wanted to buy the 3330 call option. Well, we'd go ahead and find the strike here in the middle. We'd move our mouse over to the left-hand side because that's where the calls are at. And then we'd click on the current asking price, 145.25. From there, it automatically brings up an order ticket down here at the bottom to buy 10 contracts of the Amazon 18 June 3330 calls for $145.40. We could then edit it just like we did for the stock. If we only wanted to buy one contract, we could change that from 10 to one. And if we wanted to change the price, we could do so here, change the time and force, pretty much everything. And then once we're happy with it, we just hit confirm and send like normal. It's gonna tell us the total cost of the trade. In this case, that would be $14,600. And we would just hit send. Now, for those of you who trade spreads, creating spreads in here is actually a very similar process. And I will tell you there are a few different ways to do it, but I'm gonna only show you my recommended way. So for example, let's say we wanted to uh, sell another put spread against Amazon for the 18 June, and we wanted to sell the, I don't know, 3300 by 3270 put spread. Well, we'd go ahead and find the strike price here in the middle again, the 3300 strike. We'd come over here to the put side, and because we're selling a put spread, we're gonna sell this one by clicking on the bid price. Let's go ahead and minimize this to get our screen back a little bit. And next up, we wanted to buy the 3270 put to create the vertical put spread. All we'd have to do is hold down the control key on our keyboard and click on the asking price of the 3270 put. Down there at the bottom, you can see it's automatically creating a short vertical put spread. It's selling 10 of the 3300 puts while simultaneously buying 10 of the 3270 puts, automatically creating the vertical. Now, every other spread that you wanna create is done the exact same way by holding down the control key and then clicking on the corresponding bid or ask of the options you need to buy or sell. For example, if we wanted to turn this into an iron condor instead of just a vertical put spread, we'd go ahead and scroll down to the call side. And in our case, we're gonna sell the 3330 by 3360 call spread as well. So again, we hold down the control key, click on the bid of the 3330, 
and the ask of the 3360. And now down at the bottom, you can see that it's now turned into an iron condor. And it's doing all that for a net credit of $27.97. If we hit confirm and send, it's then gonna tell us our max profit and our max loss on this trade. So in our case, our max profit is $27,970. That's the total credit received. And then our max loss is down here, $2,030. And if we actually wanna submit this, we just go ahead and hit send one more time. And if we go back to the monitor page, we can see all of our working orders here. And in our case, we're gonna go ahead and cancel out that iron condor. So just right click on it, cancel order, and now it's no longer working. But let's go back over the trade page because there are a few more things I wanna show you guys in here. And let's go ahead and minimize the option chain for the 18 Junes for a second. We kind of skipped over this here. You're gonna see the trade grid. It's the second little arrow here on the left. Now the trade grid can be edited to show you some other information you wanna see. Maybe you wanted to throw a chart in here or you wanted to see live news about the company we're looking at. But most of the time, this is gonna be your level two data. Basically, all of the currently working orders to buy or sell the stock currently working out there in the marketplace right now. In our case, we're going to go ahead and link this very first one up to red, and I'll, I'll show you how these links work later on. But now, these two tabs are linked together, so whatever I've got up here is automatically going to show down here, and we can see all of the current working orders on Amazon. Orders out there currently to buy the stock on the left, orders currently out there to sell the stock over here on the right. Now, keep in mind that when you see numbers in here, like 1, 2, 10, those are in hundreds of shares. So when you see the number one here, that's in order to sell 100 shares of stock. When you see the number two there, that's in order to sell 200 shares of stock. But if we wanted to edit this page, maybe we wanted this to be a chart instead of uh, level, level two over here. All we do is come up to the little three little lines in the top right hand corner. We're going to come down to gadget. And for this middle one, we're going to change it to a chart. Now, in this case, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because this is an actual option chart. So we're going to link this one up as well to make sure it's an Amazon stock chart. And there we go. Now in the middle, we've got a nice little chart of Amazon. But I doubt you guys are going to use this much, so we're not going to spend any more time here. We'll go ahead and minimize it. And just as some highlights down here at the bottom, we can see today's option statistics. After we open that up, we can see all of the, uh, the calls that have been purchased today, all of the puts that have been traded today. We can see the call sizzle index, put sizzle index, basically just some relevant information. But the most important thing that I find on this page is over here where it says current IV percentile. Now, for some reason, Thinkorswim mislabeled this. This is actually IV rank, and we can see the current IV rank for Amazon is 35%. There's actually no way to see current IV percentile on Thinkorswim unless you put in a custom script, which if you guys want that, I can actually put it down below in the comments or something, and you could just copy and paste it in your own platform. But this number, again, is actually IV rank, not IV percentile. Just wanted to clarify that one more time. Next up, if we minimize this, we've got options, time, and sales. This kind of speaks for itself. It's showing us all of the trades that have happened on all of the options contracts for Amazon. Up at the very top, you're gonna to see the largest orders. If it's in red, that was in order to sell. So you can see somebody sold 200 contracts of the 3450 calls at seven cents. Now for options, this number here is actual number of contracts. It's not represented in hundreds of shares. When you see 200 here, that's actually 200 contracts. And again, if you see it in red, that means it happened at the bid, so it was probably a sell order. If you see it in green, that means it filled at the ask, which means it was probably a buy order. If you see it as gray, it means it filled at the mid price, which technically means it could be a sell order or a buy order. But some people like to use this page maybe to see what the big guys are doing out there. Hopefully, if somebody puts a, a $10 million order out there, they actually know what they're doing. But again, a lot of you won't spend time here, so we'll go ahead and minimize that. And the next thing and last thing I want to show you on this page is the product depth page. Now, all this page is is a nice little comparison chart of the different strikes that are available, all of the different expirations that are available. And maybe you guys can see some big differences in implied volatility and choose to trade those those individual strikes and expirations. And that's really the last thing I'm going to show you on the trade page. Obviously, there are some other tabs up here, Forex Trader, Futures Trader, Active Trader, Pairs Trader. But I really doubt you guys are going to use any of those. And honestly, all they are is different templates for you to trade on. You can trade stock in the Forex Trader. You can trade futures in the Forex Trader. It doesn't really matter. It's just a different template that you could then set up to just quickly bounce back and forth between products. In our case, I just always keep it on the all products page and I, I really just don't get too crazy with it. Now, the next tab we're gonna jump over to is the charts page. Now, the name really speaks for itself. This is where you're gonna view the price history for the company that we're looking at. Now, just like all the other tabs, if you wanted to change the symbol we're looking at, you would just click in the black box in the upper left-hand corner. In our case, let's say we want to go to Activision, ATVI. We would just type that in, hit enter on our keyboard, and now it brings up an Activision chart. Now, you're always going to tell the type of chart that you're looking at by looking in the upper left-hand corner. In our case, we can see we're looking at an Activision one-year, one-day chart. Basically, we're looking back an entire year of trading, and each one of these green and red candlesticks on the screen right now represents one entire day of trading. 
Now, right next to it in the top left, you're gonna see that it also lists out the day that we have our mouse on right now. So in, in our case, where my mouse is at right now was August the 6th of 2020. You can see where it opened up that day, what its high of the day was, its low of the day, and where it closed out that day. Now you can zoom in on the chart a few different ways. One way is just by clicking and dragging with your mouse, and you're gonna see that when you do that, it highlights a section of your screen. Now when you let go with the mouse, it's gonna zoom in on that section we just highlighted. So again, if we wanted to zoom in, just click and drag with our mouse, zooms in on that section we just highlighted. Now to zoom all the way back out, we can just double click on the chart itself, and it zooms us all the way back to that one year time frame. Another way we could zoom in is just by simply using these plus or minus icons in the lower right hand corner where these magnifying glasses are at. Obviously click on the plus sign to zoom in, the minus sign to zoom out, pretty straightforward. Now to change the time frame entirely, maybe you didn't want to look at a yearly chart, you wanted to look at a daily chart, we would just come up here to where this letter D is at. Once we click on it, it's going to bring up our default list, basically our favorites, the ones that we use most often. And you would just simply click on the one that you want to adjust it to. In our case, let's say we wanted to go to one day, one minute. Once we click on it, it's going to look back an entire trading day. Now each one of these green and red candles are representing one minute of trading. You're also going to see that most of this chart right now is a black background. Now what that is, is the regular market session has a black background, whereas the pre and post market have this highlighted gray area right here in the middle. Now coming back up here to the time frame button, again, these are just our favorites, the ones that you probably use most often, but you can always create your own by coming over here to time frame. And then down here, you can set the time interval, how far back you want to look, and then the aggregation period, what you want each one of those candlesticks to represent. And if you think it's going to be a uh, time frame that you use super often, you can just come down here to this little star and favorite it. So then it's always in your favorites list. And then you would just hit OK. Now, in our case, we're going to stay on this one day, one minute time frame. And we're going to go ahead and add some studies to the chart as well. Now, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is click on this little beaker icon up here at the top of the page. From there, it's going to open up a pop-up window showing all of the studies we currently have on our chart on the right-hand side and a list of all of the studies we can add on the left-hand side. Now, in our case, I don't want to scroll through this very long list of studies on the left. I'm just going to go ahead and type in the studies we want to add in this black box up here at the top. In our case, let's go ahead and add RSI first. We're just going to find it in the list, go ahead and click on it, and hit Add Selected. We're also going to add MACD, so we'll go ahead and find that, click on it, Add Selected down here. Now we can see both studies on the right hand side here, both RSI and MACD, and they automatically go in as lower studies. And for the most part, Thinkorswim should know the, the section that it goes in. So in our case, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And now at the bottom here, we have RSI and we have MACD. Now it's also important to remember that these will be here regardless of the stock you're looking at. So if we come back up here and we go back to Amazon, you're going to see that RSI and MACD are still there. They didn't move. And that's because the studies are on the chart itself, not attached to the specific company. Now, let's say you also wanted to draw a trend line on here. You saw a downward trend in Amazon stock, for example. Well, one way to access your drawing tools is by simply clicking on the little center scrolly thing on your mouse. When you click down on it like a button, it's going to bring up this drawing tools menu. In our case, we're going to go to the trend line, which is just this single line right here. And keeping in mind that it's point and click, it's not a dragging button. We're going to click up here. We're going to move our mouse all the way down here, and we're going to click one more time. And we can see that it automatically puts a trend line exactly where we pointed and clicked. Now, if we wanted to delete that trend line, we would just go ahead and right click on it and say remove drawing. Now, there are a lot of other drawing tools here. You're going to see price lines. You're going to see Fibonacci's down here. And you also have text box if you wanted to actually write something on your chart itself. But I definitely recommend you always go back to the pointer when you're done. So you don't just start randomly drawing trend lines when you're when you're just trying to move around the chart. Now, if you don't have a mouse, if you're using like a laptop with a trackpad, you can also come down here at the bottom and you're going to see like a little uh, pointer icon. You just click on that and it also brings up your drawing tools menu. Now, let's say I also wanted to look at multiple charts at the exact same time. Maybe I wanted to compare Amazon to Microsoft for some reason. Well, I could come up here in the very top right hand corner. You see a big old box. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And here we're going to highlight how many charts we want to see. In our case, we just want to see two side by side. We're just going to click on that second chart there and it automatically opens up a new chart, which we can then type in Microsoft over here. Now you should have noticed that the uh, the studies that we changed did not carry over here. That's because each chart is independent from one another. And anytime you open up a new chart, it's gonna go to the chart default, which is basically just a blank template. Now, if we wanted to get rid of that, we just come back up here to the box, go back to one chart, and now we're just back on an Amazon chart. On this page, you also have a bunch of tools on the right-hand side here. You might not have noticed some, but you're gonna see trade, time and sales, active trader, big buttons, chart. I mean, there's a few others down there. Now, each one of these is a different set of tools that when you click on it, it adds that tool to the chart itself. And when you click on it again, it disappears. So time and sales is going to show you all the trades that have happened on Amazon right now. 
Active Trader, this is where you can very quickly place trades. Uh, definitely, if you're gonna be a day trader or a scalper, I would definitely recommend you learn more about this tool. But in this video today, we're not gonna spend much or really any time on it. I do have a video on this, Active Trader, if you guys wanna watch that to learn more about it. And like I said, I recommend it if you're day trading or scalping, because this is probably the fastest way to trade in Thinkorswim. But we're gonna go ahead and click on it again to get rid of it. And you've also got like level two, live news. Again, you just click on them to add them, click on them again to get rid of them. Now, the very last thing we're gonna talk about on the charts page is how you can actually edit the chart itself, basically the appearance of it. Because just keep in mind that you can change everything on here, the background color, the color of the candlesticks, pretty much everything. So in our case, we're going to fill in these, uh, these up candles. We're also gonna change the background color and we're gonna change the volume bar color. So what we do is we come up here to this little gear icon, which is the chart settings button. From there, we're gonna go to the appearance tab, which is right here in the middle. We're gonna click on this little box that says fill up. We're gonna come down here to the background color because I don't like it as dark as it is. Click on this one. And we're gonna change the volume bars to color as simple ticks. And now when we click OK, we should see a few differences now. These green candles are filled up and our volume bars are filled in. Now these other tabs up at the top here are also incredibly useful, but we just don't have enough time to go over them today. The Analyze tab has a lot of great information. One example is the Fundamentals page, which really gives you a breakdown of the company itself. Really shows you what the company does, what the analysts think of it, and then some fundamental information down here below. If you're trading options, the risk profile page is also amazing. It gives you a breakdown of your actual risk profile on the options you're holding. Basically, how are these options gonna make or lose money when the stock goes up, goes down, time changes, volatility changes, all that great stuff. Now the scan tab, this is probably one of the more useful tools on the page. This is where you can set up a filter basically to weed out thousands of companies and only show you a list of those companies that meet all of your criteria. That could be based off of things like price, based off fundamentals, based off technicals. It's really up to you. You can make it as specific or as generic as you want it to be. One example would be, let's say I only wanted to trade stock between $10 and $100. I wanted that stock to have traded over a million shares today. I wanted the company to be at least up 1% today. I also wanted to be oversold in the RSI and there had been a MACD crossover in the last 10 minutes. Well, on this stock hacker, I could set all of that up and when I hit scan in the lower right hand corner, it's only gonna show me those companies that meet my criteria. So it's an incredibly useful page and I definitely recommend you watch one of my other videos to learn a little bit more about it. Next up, we've got the Market Watch page, which to be honest with you, I never come here. Quotes is really just an expanded watch list where you've got a bunch more columns here that you could see really easily. Then you've got the Alerts tab, which is gonna show you all of your current working alerts. You've got the Visualize page, which gives you a nice little picture of what the overall market is doing right now. Financing rates, you're never gonna come here. And then Calendar gives you a nice little picture of some upcoming events upcoming earnings, upcoming dividends, stuff like that. Now, the tools and the help page, you are never gonna come here, so we're not even gonna talk about it. And then the education page. This page can be super useful because it's just got a ton of courses, webinars, webcasts. So if you guys have questions about anything or you wanna learn how to trade options or futures, I definitely recommend you come here. Lots of good info on this page. Now, one of the last things we're gonna talk about on this video today is actually this side panel over here on the left. If you haven't noticed, this page follows you everywhere you go on the platform, so it's nice to set it up to show you actually things that you find relevant. In our case, you can see I've got my account info up here, basically a breakdown of my actual account profile. We can see live news, Trader TV, a little watch list, and then a quick chart down here below. But we're gonna go ahead and edit this a little bit to show us, again, information that we actually find useful. For me, I don't find the Trader TV useful, so I'm gonna click on these three lines and say delete gadget. Give me back some real estate that I could use for something else. I'm also gonna delete this little quick chart down here on Apple, clicking on those three little lines and saying delete gadget. Now, if I wanted to add a new gadget, cause now I've got a bunch of empty space here, I can click on this little plus sign in the bottom left hand corner. And from there, I can see all of the other gadgets that are available. Account info, calculator, level two data, another watch list. In our case, I'm gonna click on watch list and now I've got a new one down here below. Now, I don't remember when I created this, it's named test here, I probably created it a while ago and I wanna create a new one. So what I'm gonna do is click on the name here, test. I'm gonna come up here to create a watch list. I'm gonna come up here where it says watch list name and I'm gonna name this one stock. Once I've done that, I'm just gonna hit save in the lower right hand corner. And now I've got a new watch list, which is completely blank. If I wanna add some symbols in there, I just click in the little black box below the word symbol and let's go ahead and type in a few. All right, there we go. So now I've got a few companies added to my watch list down there. Like everything else, this watch list can be edited. Basically the columns that are up here, symbol, last, net change. Let's say I also wanted to know the volume of shares that have been traded. I'll come up here to the gear icon, click on customize. We'll search for volume and we'll search in the list here. There it is, add it over to the right, click okay. 
And now we've got another column showing us the volume for the day. Now we'll also go ahead and expand this options watch list because I think there are a few more companies in there that we just can't see. There we go. And now this page has become a lot more useful. I can keep track of all of the companies I want to keep track of, and I've got a little live news box up in the top left hand corner. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually link all of these gadgets together. So we're going to click on this little linking button next to the live news, and we're going to change it to a red one. We're going to do the same thing to the option watch list. Click on that number two there, click on the red one, and finally do it to our stock watch list. Click on the red one. Now the reason I did red one is because your chart already has a red one up here in the top right. And what that does is it links all of your gadgets, all of your tools together so that when you click on a symbol in your watch list, everything adjusts to that symbol. You don't have to type in the symbol a hundred different times. It just automatically changes everything to match. For example, if we click on American Airlines in our watch list over here, you're going to see that the chart on the right changes to an American Airlines chart. And now the live news box in the top left hand corner is only showing us news articles that mention American Airlines. Then if we click on Apple, everything changes to Apple. AMD, everything changes to AMD. Linking all of your gadgets together is just going to make things a lot easier on you. You won't have to type in a symbol 20 different times. It'll just automatically adjust accordingly. Now, I know we just went over a lot in a pretty short amount of time, so please use the timestamps below if you guys need to rewatch some stuff that we actually went over today. And then if you guys want to watch some of my other videos to go more in depth on some of those other tools like the Active Trader or the Scan Tab, go ahead and go to my channel or look in the, the description box. I'll throw some of those links in there. And if there was anything that I missed that you guys would like me to touch on or questions that you have, please leave it down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer every single question. And for those of you new to the channel, I do cover all things options. I do platform tutorials. I give you guys an in-depth look at my portfolio pretty regularly, as well as a breakdown each month as to my option selling income. So if any of that sounds interesting to you guys, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh, to follow along with my progress. But we're going to go ahead and end it there. I really hope this helps some of you guys new to Thinkorswim out there. And I hope to see you guys all on the next one. <music>